I want to start us off with the cease and desist letter from the Big 12 to ESPN. Bob Bowlesby comes out and basically says that ESPN has been colluding, and it took forever. He talked to basically every college football media guy that he could find, anybody that would pick up. He called and was talking to him, and it started with, yeah, we know ESPN is talking to some other conferences about possibly trying to rip away some of our teams, but he wouldn't say who the conference is. And then as the night goes along, last night about 11.30 or so, Dennis Dodd gets a, gets a message from him, and I think they said it was an unnamed source, but the rest of the story was him, so it was you know, kind of easy to figure out who it was that he was uh, that he was talking to. And Bowlesby said that the American Athletic Conference has been trying to not take three, not take five. They were trying to take the entire other eight teams. They were going to make a 19-team league, and that ESPN had something to do with that. Just a disaster. Uh, Bowlesby coming out and saying, like sending a cease and desist letter to ESPN, who is one of their media rights partners, is a level of balls I have never seen from a conference commissioner in my life. Like, this was something else entirely. Let me go ahead and get you to jump in here before I ramble on the entire rest of the time. Uh, what, what were your thoughts when you saw this? So, I, I want to start with a question. Do you think he's right? Yes, I think he's right. Yeah, 100%, <laughs> right? Like, we agree... <laughs> There's no doubt ESPN 100% colluded with, A, the SEC to try to make this thing happen because they want it to happen better. Yes. They want out of that Big 12 contract. They don't think they're getting their value for it. They get one game a year that's that's a marquee game, and that's the Red River rivalry, and that's it. Um, but ESPN that, hadn't even gotten that. Like ESPN hasn't gotten oh, Red right. River. Fox still has that. Yeah, so this is almost like an ESPN versus Fox name. Yeah, they're, well, it's not even just that. It's it's they're not getting their money's worth on the Big Twelve games, and so they want out of that contract. And then they also don't want to have to pay out the money they owe for their contracts uh, for the Big Twelve. So if the Big Twelve dissolves, then then they don't have to worry about it. So yes. um, I agree with you. I like I like the balls on the AAC commissioner to just I thought go after you know three of these guys get to 14 teams, I thought that was kind of a big deal move. And this guy said, hell no, we, we're going to get them all. We'll just merge <laughs> with them, but we're not merging with them. They're merging with us because we're the one with stability. We're the one with something uh, more to we, – we think we have the more marquee schools, and I think as of right now, would you rather have Cincinnati or Oklahoma State? I think everybody in the country would take – I think they take UCF before they took Oklahoma State. It, I think and so I think Oklahoma State's the only premier product they have to offer. Like TCU and Baylor are probably two, three. West Virginia's probably in there at four. Um, you, you can't just put Iowa State in there because we brought this up before. Iowa State is really good right now. But the second Matt Campbell walks away from Iowa State, how much value do they have? It's not and much. I think you'd rather have SMU and Houston over those other schools or equal to those other schools because you got big schools in the state of Texas. The nice thing is Houston's bigger than all of them. Yes. Yes. I mean, if you're looking for brands, if you're looking for markets, the AAC has them in spades. Oh, and yeah. Not the Big close. 12. Yeah, the leftovers of the Big 12 do not. Uh, the other thing that I saw, did you hear about the, the projections for what each school would bring in in the Big 12 in 2024, 2025, if they do not expand? Yeah. If they do not bring in anything else, they they would bring in nine million dollars per school. They're currently making thirty six million, I believe. Yeah, that's not that's not great. No, that's not that's not very good at all. No, it is not. Uh, that will set it, you back. If you're the Big Twelve, you kind of don't want that. So if you are the Big Twelve schools and you have a an opportunity, I guess, to move in with the AAC, while it may not seem like much right now, where Maybe they're making $16 million per school if they merge with the AAC. It may not seem like a lot, but it may be better than what you do on your own. Right? So, I completely you know. agree. I do think they're more valuable. I kind of hope this plays out long enough just to stick it a little to ESPN and Texas and Oklahoma. Um, but at, at some point in time, these schools have to figure out 
if we stick together, we will make a lot of money off of the ESPN contract and Texas and Oklahoma leaving from their like penalties, right? Yeah. But yeah. other than that, once they're gone, all that money's gone. And so, you know, it, it's it's almost one of those things where do we do this to spite these these groups of people, these three entities, or do we whoa? I don't know what just happened. Do you hear that? You when I'm here. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. I just heard a bunch of fuzz. Anyway, uh, do you do what's best for your squad? At some point in time, you have to say, am I going to do something that's the right thing to do for me, or am I going to do the thing that spites the other groups that harmed me? Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I can see where you're coming from on that. I'm I'm a little torn um, because I think – so here's here's where I got all screwed up last night, right? When or Wednesday night, I guess it was, when everything was going on, and there was a letter from the conference commissioner to ESPN about, hey, stop talking to our teams. The teams make up the conferences, right? So the conference commissioner has to uh, basically represent these schools, but this looks like Bowlesby just trying to save his job. Like this doesn't seem like oh, there's a lot of that because if if for some reason the Big Twelve implodes, then Bowlesby's out of a job. He's unemployed. Yeah, I mean, yes, for sure. For and sure. what's he what's he gonna do? There is no more Big Twelve. What he just said, it's a company that went bankrupt. Like if you're the CEO of a company that goes bankrupt and closes its doors, there's no more company for you to CEO. You're unemployed now. Yeah, yeah, I. I, yes, you're correct. You are correct. I I just I don't know exactly how to to fix that issue. Well, you don't. Bowlesby's out of a job. Th- th- listen, this happens to people all the time when you're in the big business like like he is running hundred million dollar up to billion dollar organizations. Y- you sometimes lose your job. Okay. That, that just happens. One day, the NCAA is going to implode, and Mark Emmert or whoever's sitting in Mark Emmert's seat it's going to be unemployed, all right? that That's just the cost of this thing. You've been bad at your job. Right? I think the reason the Big 12 is as weak as it is and struggles the way it struggles for anybody to compete with Texas and Oklahoma on a regular basis is because Texas and Oklahoma take too much of the pie, all right? Well, yes. It's, yes. It's, we've seen this in the past. Yes, Alabama is the dominant team in the SEC, but teams have beaten Alabama. Teams have won the SEC um, on top of Alabama and gone on to win championships outside of Alabama or compete for them. And the only way you get that is if LSU is a poor, poor state school. And if if the SEC was constituted back in the, the, the days of when the old contract was signed, where Bama got a bigger piece of the pie than everybody else, then Bama would be that much farther ahead. And th- this would really be a Big Ten situation where there's nobody playing for – everybody's playing for second place. Nobody's playing for first. Like, there's not an option for somebody to come up and beat them. Yes. Um, yes. And, and that's basically the way the Big 12 has set themselves up. Even with all those benefits and the extra money, Texas hadn't consistently won at all, which is – kind of sad on well, their it's, part. it's all based on hiring like well, it's all hiring but we don't know that it's hiring i we both think that it's a boosters problem right well yes we don't partly, but, but we, they, well, I, i'm gonna tell you this i think tom herman's a good coach i think if tom herman got to run that program from start to finish the way he wanted to without hands involved texas would have been substantially better than texas is i could be wrong agreed. on that might be proven wrong um but I think Tom Herman is a lot better of a head coach than what we got with Tom Herman. I think that it has to do with you have to have somebody that is capable of standing up to those – somebody's got to be strong-willed. Alabama didn't have a coach that was able to do that forever. And, and no, you're not going to be able to hire Nick Saban in now, Texas. But They're not going to hire somebody who's that strong-willed unless – there's two men on that list. Okay, there's Nick Saban, there's Arvin Meyer. That's the list of people that you would allow to walk in your program and tell the boosters, leave the checkbook, hit the door. Yeah. Is there anybody else in college football you think those boosters would allow to do that? 
I think that there's some that would come in there and just take it over and not allow them in because you can uh, do that. Those people, those people would be fired the, the first loss that they have. I mean, you, you might be right about that. You might be right about would, that. They just would be they just would be fired. So so the Big Twelve, of course, sends the cease and desist. ESPN has responded to them. I, I want to read this letter in its entirety because it's not long, but this is this is crazy. Uh, the letter starts, dear Bob, like talking to Bowlesby, of course, which you start a letter like that, automatically I'm like, Yes, yes. let's go. It says this responds to your letter dated July twenty eighth, two thousand twenty one. The accusations you have made are entirely without merit, apart from a single vague allegation that ESPN has been actively engaged in discussions with at least one other unnamed conference, which ESPN disputes. Your letter consists entirely of unsubstantiated speculation and legal conclusions. To be clear, ESPN has engaged in no wrongful conduct, and thus there is nothing to cease and desist. We trust this will put the matter to rest. ESPN reserves all rights and remedies in connection with this matter. Sincerely, Burke Magnus. That so, is, that's basically saying, prove it. Like, are yeah. you sure you want to fight with us? Because well, but ES, what ESPN needs to be very careful of, they better be certain that there are zero, zero emails sent to Oklahoma and to Texas. Oh, the FOIA stuff is going to be so fantastic. Because like, those I know are Matt two Brown, state schools that are privy to FOIA. Yes. And and if any email was ever sent from any ESPN person, you you don't have to get the American stuff. You can just get the them trying to pull them away from the Big 12 alone. Yes. That that in itself is going to go be go down as collusion. I guarantee you ESPN's going to end up a owing the entire brunt of that contract if that happens in some civil lawsuit to all eight of these schools remaining and not have to not get any of the product. Well, the this, Big 12 I doubt- will be allowed to tear the contract up, go to another party completely, and all the money ESPN owes them, they will pay them anyway. So I think this doesn't have as much to do with Texas and Oklahoma as it does with the remaining eight, right? So I, this is hang on. This is- you you I get that, but the problem is, is that's going to be really hard to prove because the American conference, I don't know, is going to fall. I mean, I guess they will fall under some FOIA stuff. Well, but no, no, no. It's not part- them. It's you're you're gonna have to look for Texas Tech, Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State. Those are yes. all public schools. That's right. All, you're gonna have to yeah. you're gonna have to see did they approach any of the individual schools. That's right. But I I think even the collusion of trying to pull Texas and Oklahoma is just enough for them to say we, we're owed the penalty for both of those teams leaving, no matter if our conference dissolves or not, and we're owed the balance of that contract that you owe us. We'll take that in one large check, please. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I do think. I do think that if they find those emails, which I would believe there's emails out there, I, they don't need damning evidence. This is this is all going to fall under civil li- litigation, which means they need fifty one percent, fifty point nine percent. Yeah, that's it. You're right. You're right. That's it. Or fifty point one percent. I'm sorry. That's all they need is more probable than not enough evidence to think that it happened. I I believe that it did. I believe there's enough people out there that think that it did. I also think this is going to be try. This is where this is where politics meets sports. This is going to be tried in red states, and ESPN has gone out of their way to very much upset red states. Uh, yes, I, you are correct. I, I'm, I'm just. I, I, regardless of where you lean on the political, both of those things are factual statements. There's not a single blue state where this will be tried in, and that there's not a there's not a single red state that would say overwhelmingly they are excited about ESPN and what has happened at ESPN over the last five to six years, maybe eight years. Yeah, no, you're you're correct about that, 100. percent Let's uh, let's. I think ESPN is going to lose this battle. Almost no matter, even if they don't have evidence, it's just a we're going to state this is what we think happened, and a jury of their peers, somebody's going to put together and say we believe these people over these people. Yeah, I mean it could absolutely happen, but we shall see. We shall see exactly what will go on with that because we're bound to get more information over the next however many days. So let's move off of that. Let's talk about another college football topic. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.